What's up YouTube today? I'm in the shop and we're gonna go over some of my favorite tools that I use regularly for diagnosing electrical problems on forklifts. Okay boys, today I am in the shop and I just decided to do this because it's getting uh, pretty hot here uh, in Central Florida and my shop is air conditioned. So I thought I'd just bring the tools out of the service truck and show you just some of the things that I use on a regular basis. Um, and some are on not so a regular basis, but just things that I think that if you're gonna be in the lift truck industry, you need to diagnose um, you know, your electrical problems. Now, a lot of people will say that if you don't have a laptop for this truck or that truck, and I'm specifically talking about you know warehouse equipment, Toyota, Raymond, uh, Crown, Heister Yale, you know, those, those type of um, units. And you know, I, I, I've heard some people say that, oh, you have to have a laptop or you have to have this or that. And you know, in most cases, that is not true to diagnose your electrical problems. You may have to figure out how to get into whatever built-in analyzer the lift truck has, but most trucks these days have a built-in analyzer and that really is the key. I've diagnosed a lot of Toyota forklifts using their built-in analyzer and a lot of crowns using their built-in analyzer. Um, and then for, for the some of the Raymonds that I do, most of it just comes down to having a service manual, a wiring schematic, and just understanding what the lift truck is telling you when it codes out. But that's just, you know, very, that's when you get, you're getting, you know, really off the beaten path, you've checked your basic stuff. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first tool that you will absolutely need as a technician is a multimeter. You wanna make sure to get an auto ranging multimeter and a true RMS meter as well. This one that I have is a snap-on meter. You don't have to get a snap-on meter. I've used Fluke. Uh, I've even had a Craftsman one a while back. I bought this snap-on one because it has a seven year warranty and I'm pretty much a snap-on fanboy and tool whore. So why not? So you definitely need a, uh, a multimeter, but one of the other important things that you need with this multimeter, because remember, you know, when you're diagnosing electrical problems, you're probably gonna have to probe connectors and stuff, and you do not wanna go sticking this huge, gigantic, blunt <laughs> instrument into the hole, you know what I'm saying? With electronics, you wanna do precision. You don't wanna um, jam it up. So I actually got this kit on Amazon, I think, and it's just like a supplement to my uh, meter kit. Hold on a second. Let me get this unwound here. Use if you're um, if you're diagnosing with an oscilloscope. I don't have one an oscilloscope. I should probably get one though because most forklifts are using a CAN network of some type these days. Um, and then that way you can um, with a with a CAN network you can have like your positive, ne negative, your different channels and whatnot. But what I like about these is that you plug this end into the meter and then this end. Uh, it can be an alligator clip and um, you know you can like hook it on to different things or if you need to post stuff up that's pretty darn cool. Um, the other thing you can do is if you want to use like your meter lead end you can actually hold on a second you can actually clip like you can clip an end onto your meter like that and then you can use one of these test probes that are super fine and you can back probe your connector and then you can actually insert this like that. And you get, it just ensures that you're getting a good connection and that you're not damaging anything. You really wanna be careful when you're probing um, connectors because that is the fastest way to have a new electrical gremlin when you're done trying to figure out what the original electrical gremlin was. So you definitely, I suggest how you need a, a, an auto ranging meter and you definitely need one of these kits that has the alligator clips and these test probes. I like these test probes too, just because they make a really good connection. You can use T-pins and stuff, but I just find, you know, fumbling, like I don't have to fumble with anything if I'm having to hook this up. Uh, I can keep my hands free because it's just hooked up. I think this kit was like, this kit was 20 bucks, I think, or $18 on Amazon, and I just keep it neat and tidy for when I need it. The snap-on meter was, I, you know, I, I overpaid, let's face it, it's, I doubt Snap-on even makes that meter. 
Okay, on to the next thing. All right, the next thing that you're definitely gonna need, and this is kind of in line with the, um, with the meter is, you need a test light. And this test light is a three to 48 volt test light. I don't have uh, any trucks that I've ever worked on that are more than 48 volts. So this test light is good for me. And what I mainly use this for is not necessarily checking voltage, but a lot of times if you're having a weird electrical gremlin on a forklift, I always check frame volts. And so what I do is I'll leave the battery in the truck and this, this pertains mostly to um, electric forklifts because they don't use a chassis ground. Whenever I'm getting like a weird travel issue or a weird hydraulic issue and I'm suspecting that I could have some frame voltage, I need to check to make sure that there's no amperage in the frame because that's where you really start to have some problems. So what this light does is I'll unplug the battery from the truck and leave it in the truck and then I'll hook this, you know, to your negative cable and then I'll just start probing around the frame and if I can light this light on the frame, then I know that I have an issue with the battery that needs to be addressed and if there's nothing with the battery, but as soon as you either plug it, the battery in or you turn the truck on, you know that there's something that is shorting directly to the frame and you can fix that instead of ordering modules and replacing random expensive components. Okay, so you definitely need a test light for checking that kind of stuff. Not necessarily, I mean, yeah, you can use it to check voltage on stuff, but I mostly use it to check for um, amperage in the frame. Okay. The next thing is I use these tools mostly for diagnosing um, pallet trucks that have a four or six volt battery pack, floor scrubbers that have a four or six volt battery pack, or golf carts that have, you know, a multi six volt uh, pack. So sometimes you'll have a truck and this is this one. This is just from Harbor Freight because all it is is a resistor and two cable leads. I don't know how much it is, but I'm sure it's not that expensive. I have had this for a long time. And this tester will put a 100 amp load on the battery. And if your battery can't take a 100 amp load, you're going to know it really, really fast. And so I actually use this today to diagnose a bad battery pack, which let's face it, battery packs are garbage anyway. So um, you definitely need this to diagnose any kind of walk behind pallet jack, floor scrubber, um, scissor lift or just anything that's going to use a 6 volt or a 12 volt style um, golf cart or you know, like a deep cycle 6 or 12 volt battery. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can, I've never really tried to use this on an industrial battery, but I think an industrial battery would just be, um, it's just too strong for this. So that's what you need for diagnosing that kind of stuff. It just makes finding the battery real easy because you can just go battery to battery to battery and just, you know, hit the switch real quick and it's going to tell you right here whether or not, you know, your 100 amp load that you're placing it, placing it on is going to, um, you know, whether or not the battery is bad. So that's cool. Now sometimes you will want to check your specific gravity of your battery just to make sure that that's cool so I do keep one of those on don't really use that this a whole lot if I'm using this it's because you know I can't find anything that's like overtly bad with the battery so now I'm like you know I'm really looking for something um, that's not quite as noticeable and so I will use that so you do need that though um, every once in a while okay so let's talk handsets now I don't have every single handset out there. I just have the handsets that I use and need on a regular basis. Um, depending on, you know, what your fleet of trucks is will depend on what kind of handset you need. So if you have like um, a whole bunch of, you know, Yales that are running Zappy controllers, you're gonna need a Zappy handset for Yales or a Zappy handset for Crowns. Um, but this is the one that I have because uh, I run into a lot of Curtis controllers. They're pretty common out there. And so this is the Curtis controller I use. This one is the 1313 model and it is the dealer version, the 4401 version. I think I paid like 600 bucks for this guy. Maybe 700, I'm not really sure, I don't remember. I've had this for a really long time though. And what I like about this particular uh, Curtis handset 
is that it gives you a lot more options for tunability when you because you know you don't always know exactly what you're going to be plugging this into you might be plugging this into a raymond or a crown or you know a yale or just you know really anything that has a curtis controller in it and so i i definitely like this controller um for that for programming diagnostics and all that other stuff um for the for the raymonds i actually have this little box i bought and i think this box was like 400 300 bucks three or four hundred bucks and what this is, this is just a key to turn, you know, for some reason, Raymond, it's like you can't just plug this handset into a Curtis controller on a Raymond. You have to actually put this box on before it will turn this controller on. You can also use this when you like go into a Raymond jack or whatever to get it to unlock its parameters if you need to reprogram it. I have a customer that has a whole lot of Raymond walk behind jacks. And so I use this quite a bit. I don't use this one so much because as long as I have a code and the wiring schematic, generally I'm pretty good. If, um, if I pull this out, it's because I'm really searching for some input that's intermittently failing that I, I can't catch with a meter, I can't probe it, you know, whatever the case may be, so I'll, I'll want to see it here. So I think um, most, of the, most of the time though today with a lot of forklifts though, the built-in analyzers are really excellent uh, if you know how to get into them. And uh, for the customers that I have, I know how to pretty much get into all of the built-in analyzers that I need to. So that really helps a lot of diagnostics. And so, you, you know, handsets are kind of going away. I know that, you know, dealers still have laptops for programming, uh, software updates and whatnot, but I'm strictly talking just trying to diagnose, you know, your, your code E150s or, you know, your code 342s or, you know, whatever the case may be. So. You got to have some handsets depending on what it is that you're working on. But this is a really, really good one to start with because a lot of stuff has Curtis controllers on it. Okay, so the next thing that I have here is a Lyle Master Relay and Fuse Circuit Tester Kit. Um, you know, by the time you're actually pulling this out, you're probably in, in the weeds trying to figure out what's going on with something. But So what's really cool about this is you can plug this in to um a port and you can check all of your input voltages and whatnot and you know you can plug your relay in on top of here and then you know you can test your coils your so your coil circuit and your switch side so you could test all that stuff with those pretty cool i don't remember how much that was the part number on this is six nine three zero zero was that was the part number for this kit um, it comes with all kinds of cool leads and stuff like so for plugging in um, plugging into the top here, or whatever. So it's just pretty. It's just a pretty cool kit for diagnosing relays, and it's just hard because I don't know if you, if any of you out there have ever tried to like if you've ever gotten to a point where you're like, man, I think I've got a bad relay or whatever, and you're actually looking at like a fuse block. It's really hard to get up under there. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to to get it unbolted because of whatever components are around it and move it around. So this just eliminates. A lot of those problems by being able to just pull the fuse out put this in put the fuse back on top and then you have your test points right here so super convenient you don't need that a lot because relays are you know they're pretty reliable but if you do get in the weeds that's one option all right so the next thing i have is a fuse saver kit this too is mostly just for gas trucks if you're um if you're like popping fuses on something um the operating voltage limit on this is 14 volts so anything within that range what's good about this is that um if you do have something that you know you have a short circuit somewhere and you're not really 100 percent sure these are just basically circuit breakers so if you have a fuse that you're blowing you can hook up these to it and then you can plug this sucker in and then you can start to track your fuse down without going through 500 fuses trying to you know track down wherever your short to ground is okay all right the last tool hold on i gotta do the do so the last tool that i actually go to when i can is the power probe now this is only going to be good for like 12 and 24 volt circuits so you could do um obviously you could do gas trucks you can do um pallet jacks that are 24 volts it doesn't matter if they're industrial battery or battery pack 
any scissor lifts or scrubbers that are 24 volts quite a few of those out there so and i mean if you have like a reach truck or something an old old school reach truck that is a an older school reach truck that's 24 volts i don't think they're making i don't think crown or anybody's making a 24 volt reach truck anymore could be wrong about that not sure so the cool thing about the power probe that i really like is that you just you just hook the wires onto uh, positive and negative, and then um, when you are diagnosing your issue, you know you just you just probe around, and it'll blink a, a green light and a like a low tone for negative for a negative signal, and then it'll beep a red light and a high tone for positive, or that there's amperage there. You know what I'm saying? That you have a good positive signal, and then you use this button right here and you can actually drive components. So if you have a light or, you know, you just something actuated on a switch or anything that you need to send a positive signal to, you can actually do it with this bad boy. And the nice part about this uh, probe, and also has these LED lights on top, so it doesn't matter where you aim it, you always have a light, that's kind of nice. So the nice part about the probe is if you are searching for constant positive or negative signals in your diagnostics, it's really cool because you can just unplug the connector and just start probing the connector and it'll be like, you know, beep, boop, beep, boop, and it'll just tell you which one is which. And so, um, you know, you can find some problems pretty fast with that. Really wish Power Probe would make one that goes up to 48 volts because I would probably use this a whole lot more if they did. So that is it for that one. I think the power probe, this power probe I bought, I think was only like $200, maybe $250. I got the master kit that has like, you know, these different attachments on it and stuff, which I've never even used. So I've just always used the basic. I probably could have just got the, the basic kit and it would have been okay. So this is a cigarette lighter adapter thing. I actually broke it because I don't use this on cars. Let's see what else came with this thing. You know, just some different attachments for hooking up the, the probes, which again, I've never used. So I probably could have bought the 100 and I think 70 or $160 version of this and it would have been okay. I did look into Snap-on's version of the Power Pro, but I think it was like $1,000. And even though I'm a fanboy, I'm not like that much of a fanboy. And I had to pass on that. Okay, so those are some of my favorite go-to tools for doing electrical diagnostics. Um, none of those tools are a replacement for learning how to read a wiring schematic and also to read and understand the codes that your unit is throwing. You wanna make sure that when you read the codes, you try to understand what the unit is telling you to look for. So these are just tools to help you look for those problems, but those are the ones that I like to use on a regular basis. And, um, you know, start with the simple stuff. Um, if you're into this kind of style of video where you wanna see some tool stuff, let me know. Not really sure about that, I mean, I've actually been really busy. It's the reason I haven't shot any videos. We've also had some uh, rainy weather lately, which has prevented me from getting the camera out. And I've just been in some weird places, so can't really get the camera out every single place that I go. If you have a question about a job that you're doing or, or something along those lines, and if there's a tool or a way to do the job, make your life easier, just hit me up in the comments section. And if I don't know, I will check with some of my buddies who are really experienced technicians in the industry and see what we can come up with there. Um, if you have questions about the shop or anything, head over to my other channel, Adventure Every Mile. I have some stuff uh, on the shop there. Uh, mostly do Jeep type stuff over there because I love, I love Jeeps. So, until next time, stay safe out there and thanks for watching.